Now for the background trees I have quite a lot of cobalt blue mixed with crimson here and I'll add a bit of raw sienna if I add the raw sienna it turns a grey rather than a purple and that don't mix them completely but there's a lot of paint there because we need a lot of paint there's a lot of trees in this picture my palette is a hell of a mess I always end up with a palette like that and I'll pick up a lot of paint with a hog bristle brush and the question is now where to put the trees so well we know this needs blocking in so let's just block in everything that needs blocking in don't stop here on top of your mountains go above the mountain go well above it and there so colour all that in don't mix your paint completely too you'll see there's blues and crimsons coming off all different tones coming off here all different tones of grey and block them in with a down brush stroke which opposes the background brush stroke which again gives you a bit of perspective even though it's an undercoat it is important to put your undercoat on in the right direction block these in these will be trees along here not necessarily exactly this shape there's a lot of trees up in this area here and right up here why not our river will come in here somewhere that's too far away I want this a close-up scene of the river so we have to come up somewhere with big trees let's start there there I don't like that bit of mountain so much let's come up here in fact I think I'm going to come right up right up there why not we'll have the mountain showing through there that's it because down at the river you really can't see the mountain from many positions you know it's there you always know it's there right next to the river almost but it's a bit hard to see there's not many positions you can see it okay let's go right up here nice big trees next to the river that's a bit more like it and these are big trees so they have a big area like that where these ones have a smaller area a smaller mushroom shape it's of light through the trees and here I do want to see the mountains though but something's got to go that's got to go let's try that yes that'll do and again some light through the trees let's have some darks and lights here lots of trees lots of big camp laurel trees and gum trees well that's the background trees blocked in and now we move into the green so I've got warm yellow here of course I've got my raw sienna still there and it's green and I forgot the crimson we'll put it there and I'll mix a colour just that's not quite white let's have a little bit of this and a little bit of that in it and this is for the branches for the background trees that's okay let's run a blue tint through it and then with my round soft brush I'll run it through the darker colours and then clean it and pick up the pick up some darker colours and some light colours both on the brush at once and we can paint in the branches now the branches on this side of the painting over this side need to lean into the picture that way and don't be too fussy with these because we're going to put foliage over the top and if you learn to use the brush with two fingers you'll find that the paint rolls off and you turn the brush as you put it on so just put in your branches you will put more branches in than what you need because a lot of them will get covered over with foliage I mean like this and let's have some down the bottom see how it looks some might turn out all right be careful you don't keep them all exactly equally spaced break them up a bit not pure white bit of light bit of dark and right across the painting just simulate your branches These are all types of trees, there's camphor laurel trees, there's gum trees and there's a few pines in there too, we might put some pines in in a moment. And there's a smaller brush, we use that on the distant ones. I'm not real happy with this being right in the middle of the mountain. You see it comes together and that's in the middle. And up here through the sunlight area I'll put the darker branches 
it was just blue and white. That's all, the cobalt blue and white. Clean my brush there. Now for the foliage colour. I always have a bit of paper in my other hand ready to clean my knife. I know we need a yellow and a bit of white to start with. So we'll put that there and then add the littlest bit of the Viridian Green. Like that. So that's too bright and too white. We need a bit of these colours in there too. And a bit of this colour to take it back a bit. And there we have a mixture of colours. And that'll give us the tones for the background. Now I'm going to try a little brush. This is a little house painting brush. Let's see how it goes. I'll clean it, I'll dirty it in here I mean. I'll load it with dark paint, clean it. And then a bit more dark paint on. Going towards the blue tones. And then I'll pick up, oh I must get it the right shape first. That's about right. Pick up some tones like that of the different colours. There's all the different colours of the greens there. And I'll start on these distant trees and start painting the foliage in. Now this is above the dark. Well, that paint's rather thick. There's a lot of paint on there. Let's try here. That's okay. I'm not following the trees exactly. Okay, not too bad. Now this tree I'm not happy with. I'll bring in the shape the other direction now. Yeah, so dab it on. I've got a bit too much paint on the brush at the moment. We'll clean that up later. That looks a bit messy. I think it'll work better on these bigger trees here. That's better. And the bigger trees up the top. That's better. You do need the dark as well as the light. We'll pull the brush into shape again. Pick up some more paint. And continue. That's the sunlight on the top of the trees. Now get them into this gum tree shape where they... They seem to form umbrellas. There's an umbrella there, one there, one there. This has got a little bit too much raw sand ring, but you can't get it the same every time. That's our distant trees. And then again with a little round brush, we touch up the branches, make them neat. Make sure they cross each other here and there. Fill in those few branches that are missing and face them into the picture. Now we can come back over this later if we wish and put another lot there. And you can wait till it dries to do that too if you wish. I'll keep using this brush. It's not the best brush but it, it seems to be working. It'll come good. There. And the other side. I want a lot of crispy colours here against the mountain to give us contrast. And again, I'm using the tip of the brush, just the tip of the edge, and just watching what comes off. Of course, they're not as bright as they could be. They could be a lot brighter, but we need the bright colours for the foreground. There. So you use your favourite brush when you're doing this. Sometimes you get a brush that looks great. Now that looks okay. There, it's not too bad. And a little bit of detail here and there. And touch these ones up. Make sure you come over the top. Don't let any of the dark stick out through the top of the tree like that. Make sure you have the light colour on top of the tree. You'll notice that my underneath paint is dried. So yours might be still wet. If you're painting in oils, it'll definitely be wet. If you're painting in acrylic, sometimes it stays wet. You just do exactly what I'm doing over the top. Over the top of the dry paint. Make sure you clean your brush every time you pick up paint. Few colours there. Dab, dab, dab. And on the top here, I'll pick up the bits that had a little bit more white in them. You see that? A little bit of bright on the top there. Now, that's just the, the light, the sunlight on my brush, not the darks. There's a little bit of dark and light. So I'll put a little bit of dark and light along the top here. It was good contrast up against the sky. Now 
and with a little brush a few little off white branches just here and there so that's our background trees I think there's a little branch missing here somewhere I'm a bit wobbly today and that bit there I'll go back and deliberately fix it up with a more delicate brush stroke I still don't like it right in the middle of that gap there but that's okay it would have been better if the highest part of the tree was either side and the middle coming through it doesn't matter there I'm sure we can make something out of that later clean my brush here 